We're ready, Mr. There we go. Okay, the Fauquier County School Board meeting is called to order, and at this time, Dr. Check is going to lead us in the pledge. You would please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Sorry. We'll give Ms. Reardon a second to join us. Oh, that's okay. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Ms. Calhan, if you would please take the roll and record. And at this time, if there. Madam Chair, I move that the school board uh, approve the agenda as written. A second. Motion and a second that the agenda be adopted as written. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. And we move to announcements. The Mountain Vista Governor School Governing Board meeting scheduled for Thursday, May 16th is canceled. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. There will be a Parks and Recreation Co-op meeting Tuesday, May 21st in the Alice Jane Childs Building Basement Conference Room at 6 p.m. There will be a building committee meeting Thursday, May 23rd at 9.30 a.m. in the school administration conference room. Chairman's night will be Tuesday, May 28th at 5 p.m. in the school administration conference room. There will be a school board work session Tuesday, May 28th at 6 p.m. in the school administration conference room, and that is Tuesday night, not Monday night, everybody. <coughs> Get that. There will be a health advisory committee meeting Wednesday, June 5th at 8 a.m. in the Central Complex meeting, Building Conference Room. There will be a special education advisory committee meeting Wednesday, June 5th at 5.30 p.m. in the Central Complex Building A Conference Room. There will be a school support council meeting Thursday, June 6th at 7 p.m. in the School Administration Conference Room. Kettle Run High School graduation will be Friday, June 7th at 6 p.m. in Cougar Stadium. And that is rain or shine. Is that right. correct? No <laughs> rain. No <laughs> rain. Shine, please. No rain, sleet, or snow. Fauquier High School graduation will be Saturday, June 8th at 8 a.m. at Falcon Field. And Liberty High School graduation will be Sunday, June 9th at 3 p.m. at Jiffy Lube Live. And the next school board meeting is Monday, June 10th at Fauquier High School in the Falcon Room. A reception for honorees will be held from 6 to 6.30, and I believe that reception is in the lobby yes. area. And recognitions will be held from 6.30 until 7 o'clock when the regular, regular meeting will begin. And at this time, we, are, we have several special presentations that we want to make, and um, board, let's move down front for a few minutes. Join us. <coughs> statement I started when I paying tribute to Dr. Jonathan Lewis, and that is, I believe it was no accident that Dr. Sandra Mitchell was our leader during these past four months. Of the 64 months I've been on the board, without a doubt, the past four were some of the most difficult. She experienced demanding situations and was called on to make many difficult decisions. The weight of the events at Sandy Hook, middle school redistricting, changes in employee pay schedules, and health insurance, middle school scheduling, new leadership, and then finally, of course, the budget. 
<laughs> and it was perfect that Dr. Mitchell was our leader. This was a time when it was so easy to forget why we do what we do. We needed someone who could help us focus on the main thing, our students. Dr. Mitchell was exactly the right person. This was a time when we needed someone who deeply understood, could, genu could genuinely empathize with our employees, and someone who they could trust. Dr. Mitchell was definitely that person. This was a time when we needed a leader who could take on challenges, be so courageous, and think outside the box's box. Dr. Mitchell was certainly that person. This was a time when we needed a leader who was thorough, detailed, and who could methodically and clearly explain the concept, the decision, the process, or the reasoning. And Dr. Mitchell is absolutely that person. And finally, we needed a confident yet humble person who could step back, take another look, genuinely listen, and acknowledge that there might be another path. And Dr. Mitchell, without a question, is that person. And we cannot thank you enough. So thank you. dying to say for the last four months. So we made you a little sign to put in your office. And it says, please. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, is this any better? Uh, 
But two principals of mine, Mr. Seitz and, and uh, is moving on, my principal back in high school and when I started out teaching and then for the last 14 years, my partner here, um, Miss Muschetti and anybody that knows Miss Muschetti knows uh, how much of a fan of reading she is and an uh, interesting story about Christine or, or really a neat story is that every time we've had a book fair, she's always made it a point to find a donor or somebody that can help out and see to it that all of our students that may not have the opportunity to have a book do. And, and that's been great to give out those uh, passes to those kids through the years, and that's been because she's made that happen. And uh, so tonight, I'm glad to be able to repay some of those books to you. And I have two of our students, and two special students, because these two young men, Michael Wines and my son, David Graham, basically have been raised at Marshall Middle School. And she also was kind of neat to watch through the years as these young men would go uh, to the book fair. Come over here for just a second. As we go to the book fair, she'd always kind of say, was there anything there that you boys kind of were looking at at the book fair? And lo and behold, it would end up maybe on somebody's desk the next day. So uh, this is, I think, that um, I'm very happy to be able to repay some of those books with some of her kids that she's really made an impact on. Thank you. Not only does the school board, the administration, uh, the folks at uh, Marshall Middle School, the parents, teachers, students, not only are we going to miss you, but we are going to, I know, one day wish that you were back here with us. There's no <laughs> doubt in my mind. Even though, even, even though Dave is going to have some pretty big shoes to fill, nothing or thing? nobody <laughs> can miss you. We know that. You leave a rich history of accomplishments. Uh, you have in-depth knowledge of uh, the education system. And all of that, it, it's going to be hard to substitute. It's going to be hard to replace. Because all of that is you. You built it. And we sincerely appreciate everything that you have done, everything that you are doing, and everything that we know that you will continue to do for the students, not just in Parkland County, but wherever you land, we know that. Well, I've threatened to haunt them. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be close. <laughs> and uh, we sincerely appreciate Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. called the Platinum Four, and they're going to send him off with a wonderful farewell.
be happy to go. We might shed a tear reminiscing on the times throughout the years. Mr. Sights, without your support, we wouldn't be who we are today. So we Mr. Seitz, we'd, we'd, li we'd like to give Mr. Seitz uh, a present. On behalf of Dr. Young. Um, yes, exactly. Thanks, <laughs> Not, <everyone. laughs> He's the man. Oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, man, she's so good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Remember at convocation last year, I talked about a little bit about how Fauquier County Schools for me is family, and gave a lot of an example, a lot of examples. And one of them was that um, when Duke and I were just young things, and we won't say how many years ago, right? <laughs> Walking the halls of Fauquier High School, um, Roger was there uh, roaming the halls. <laughs> 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 and um, it has been a lot. Forty years, 45 years, and I don't know if people understand how much you give up when you have spent 45 years giving to Faulkner High School and the Faulkner High School community, and you, I mean, you know, that's your life, it's been your life, and Great. for that, we are all eternally grateful, and, um, we know that he's got that little farm that he wants to spend a lot of time at, and we also know he's got a lot of grandchildren that he wants to spend some time with. So, we couldn't get the real thing. <laughs> That's right. If I can get it out of here. <laughs> but we got, well, you can, this will be your start, I guess. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Um, I will add that um, we're glad to have Dr. Jack sitting here with us tonight, and he did receive a welcome also. We did that last <laughs> Last week, a week before, <laughs> whenever, your, May 1st. your first day. I got May a tremendous welcome from Dr. Mitchell. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I do not believe there is a response to citizens' time, so we will move into citizens' time tonight, and the school board appreciates public input. However, due to time constraints, citizens' time is not a time for dialogue. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Matters relating to personal or personnel issues should not be discussed. The school board welcomes the public's comments and believes community involvement is an important component of a successful school division. And I believe I have two names. Um, the first one is Kathy Fine. If you would please um, come to the podium and state your name in magisterial district. And we'll give you three minutes and I'm not sure if the lights are working or not. <laughs> Okay. Um, good evening. My name is Kathy Fine. I'm the president of the Band Boosters at Kettle Run High School, um, Center District. We'd like to also thank Dr. Sandra Mitchell 
for her service as acting <coughs> superintendent of schools while our elected school board members conducted their search for our new superintendent, Dr. Jack. Welcome to Fauquier County. Thank you. At last month's school board meeting, Roger Miller brought to the board a petition signed by 924 people who opposed cuts in middle school music programming. On behalf of the petition signers, which is now over 1,000, we'd like to thank you, our school board members, and thank Dr. Mitchell for your decision to postpone any actions on middle school programming until the fall. Your decision will allow Dr. Jack time to transition into his new position prior to lending his expertise and vision to such an important issue. As voting, tax-paying citizens of Fauquier County, we look forward to working with all of you uh, to find a truly equitable solution to middle school programming should it later be determined that any changes are warranted. In either case, we remain united in opposition to any future cuts in music programming at our middle schools. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Pat, you. Patricia Baker. Don't start that thing in. Good evening, Dr. Jack, school board members. Madam Chair, I'm Pat Baker. I'm president of the Foggier Education Association. And three minutes just isn't really enough time. But I promise to sit down this time. Um, we have a big problem. Unfortunately, I'm sure that every teacher in the classroom, every assistant, every bus driver, every food service, every custodian, we all love working. We all love working with our children. We all love supporting the children. And we know you do too. You put a lot of time in. You put extra hours in. You get elected. You want to do this job. We would ask, I would ask, on behalf of nearly 600 members, that you reconsider the health care proposal that you have tonight. I notice that on the agenda, you are going to be moving it to possible action, which would take place tonight. We do not understand why the county employees enjoy better plans with the same price that we all paid last year. You have removed one of the high option plans for some of us. 30, 40 years of paying for high option meant we paid higher premiums for a reason. We preferred that plan and we were willing to pay more. We did last year with a 20% increase. And now because there's $500,000, and that's what Falkier now said, I saw in the budget 800, but I'm reading 500,000. Because of that 500,000, you can cut healthcare down to two plans. Not only has it cut the two plans, but the plan that is less well, optimal for us, is also costing more than the higher plan last year. A family plan is $90 more a month for some of our assistants work for insurance. They will be bringing home, they'll be owing you. They will be writing a check after they get their paycheck to pay for their family's health care. It's $90 more a month for a school employee. The Board of Supervisors say their employees haven't had a raise. And because we have a raise, the Board of Supervisors will also say, we give your board the money. It's up to them how they spend it. And for some reason, because there is a budget deficit, the health care for your employees just seemed like a really great way to get $500,000 to $800,000. It is not a good way. Teachers in 2008 received $1,500, which was due the year before. And they were making at step 30 with an MA roughly $71,826. If you froze us since 2008, but gave a 9% increase, next year's salary should be 78464 for an employee with 30 or more years. In actuality, step 30 is going to be 70678 which means they will be making $7,000 less in five years' time with a 9% increase. We cannot afford the salary with this cut and this increase in health care cost. Please, if nothing else, just recess and see. You're going to get half a million dollars in January. Put something on hold and then apply that half a million to that or to pay, us, pay people a stipend for that. 
I thank you for your time, and really, it is very serious. Teachers cannot stay in Fauquier County with the pay and the health care. Thank you. Okay, we move to reports, <coughs> and we'll start over here on my left, Ms. Rudin. I don't have any report this month. Okay. Ms. Wolf. <coughs> um, I just wanted to thank uh, Christine Machete and Roger Seitz for their long years of service to all our students. And a major welcome to Dr. Jack here tonight. Thank you. This is great. Um, the Finance Committee, we didn't have really have anything to report other than the reports you're going to see. And the Health Advisory Committee meeting was postponed, postponed to a later date. Um, I just want to thank Amy Cooler, who is a counselor with the Boy Scouts, um, for Troop Number 1187 in Bealton. I guess one of the things that the uh, Scouts do is they have a badge where they need to find a topic that they're interested in find the elected official who's in charge of that and then interview them. And I, they invited me with their scouting group last week to come speak with them. These, these scouts were awesome. They asked questions about bus routes, about SOLs, about funding, special education lunches. I mean, it was really uh, quite uh, extensive. Um, but I just would like to suggest uh, another time again, bring it up again, that I would like this board to revisit some sort of student participation in our board. And I have some new ideas about how we could do that rather than just have somebody sit here and I, I think we could really, we could really gain a lot of knowledge from them and I think it would really make a major impact in a student's life. Um, and then on Tuesday, May 7th, Dr. Mitchell and I went to Washington, D.C. to um, uh, watch the event honoring um, here, hold on, I'm having a problem. Attend the Washington Post Educational Leadership Award for uh, Steve Parker. And uh, we brought back programs, I think, for you all to look at. It was incredible to be in the presence of all these great leaders and to see us be so greatly represented by um, Steve Parker. And uh, all of his family was there, all of his children, his three children, his wife Karen, and also his father from Pennsylvania. But an interesting note, is his mother could not be there. And his mother could not be there because his grandmother was receiving the award for uh, Volunteer of the Year for the entire state of New York from the governor of New York. Wow. Wow. So oh, the wow. apple doesn't fall far from the tree. So wow. really a great, uh, great thanks to uh, Steve Parker. And then again on Friday, I had the great honor to attend the Liberty High School uh, School Cooperative Education Appreciation Luncheon. Uh, Sandra Colvin, Valerie Hermes, and Pat Woodward just do a great job. And for those not familiar with the Cooperative Education Program, it provides a structured method for kids to combine classroom-based education with a real-life practical work experience. And the employers were just a tremendous amount of employers. In fact, at the circuit court where I work, we have a student there with us. And it's just been really great. So thanks to Liberty High School for giving those students that great opportunity. And finally, with last week being um, Teacher Appreciation Week, um, I would just like to express my heartfelt appreciation to our teachers and to all of our employees. I know that the continued and prolonged resource but limited resources puts ever increasing demands on all of our employees, which means you are doing more for less. And it is your continued dedication and willingness to do whatever it takes to serve our students that has buffered this community from the real and lasting impact of these continued budget cuts. And you, our employees, deserve a tremendous appreciation. So thank you deeply. <coughs> That's it. Thank you. Mr. Uh, I would like to thank, I've, I've seen some um, volunteerism in our schools recently and um, really want to thank the people who volunteered. But more importantly, there's an unrecognized position that goes on in our schools and it's those staff people, those teachers who coordinate volunteers and who give up a lot of extra time. Um, there's a lot of people doing that in these schools uh, in these schools. I happened to volunteer for something and realized what a pain in the backside I've been to people trying to coordinate me. Um, and <laughs> I just can't uh, imagine. <laughs> uh, 
uh, and I just want to thank them because it, it, you know, there's a lot of parents out there who want to be involved in their children's education and volunteer in the schools, um, and I want to thank them. And, and also, uh, just I think we may hear about it later and you may read about it, but there is a volunteer at Bradley uh, that we lost this week. Um, and, um, uh, and just in that, in that sort of uh, knowledge and in, in reflection of that, I just want to thank all the, the people in our schools who coordinate these volunteers. Wonderful. Thank you. Sir, okay, just bear with me, okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try to cover a lot of bases here tonight. I'm going to start off with the personnel committee meeting. Uh, there were two key recommendations coming out of uh, the personnel committee meeting that we had here a couple of weeks ago, uh, and I'm not going to steal any of the thunder from Ms. Downs. Ms. Downs is going to be talking about uh, two needed teaching positions uh, that uh, do come before you as recommended by the personnel committee, okay? Um, building committee, I'm going to give you a, a pretty lengthy readout of all the things that's been going on, uh, particularly with, with Fauquier High School. And Warren, if I miss, if, uh, if, I, uh, if there's a miscue or something here, please, please correct me as I go through this, okay? Yes, Phase one, uh, there, there's so much that has been done and we're still on budget. Um, I'm going to share with you some of the things that we're still working on. Uh, the connection of the building addition to the pre-existing building uh, will be completed during the summer 2013. Uh, we're still working on a few punch list items, uh, programming, adjusting, commissioning, and training uh, of our mechanical, mechanical controls and electrical systems that's still undergoing, uh, ongoing. Uh, completion of the larger chemistry shelving. Uh, have we? We're on June, 10th, sir. June the 10th on that one? Okay. Uh, also the Falcon Room window shade uh, in the physics lab, the, uh, those cabinets and everything on, mm -hmm. uh, on schedule. Uh, some, some of the closeout procedures and documentation. The definition of uh, the 1963 100 200 wing and associated landscaping will be started after school ends on June the 7th, correct? Okay. Um, here's a biggie. Staff is evaluating the potential reuse of a lot of the furniture, classroom furniture. And it's a possibility that we could save anywhere from what, 50 to 75 percent of um, and, and reuse the, the, that classroom furniture, saving us a lot of money, okay? Uh, let's see. Under phase two, the Performing Arts Center, uh, the site work, uh, definition, foundations, and steel structure and interior partitioning, uh, all that framing for the 500 and 600 wings are nearly completed now, if not complete, but they're near completion. Uh, the masonry walls, the exterior walls, all of that is already started in progress. And the existing stage floor will be completely renovated during this summer, 2013. Uh, phase three uh, is the renovation of the existing 500 wing and the biology wing uh, and converting the 1979 100, 200 wing to a separate building, that's the far end down there. Uh, the renovation of the administration area and biology, uh, biology wing uh, will begin as soon as school is over. So all of that, there's a lot of stuff being planned for this summer to tie up some loose ends and to move into phase two and phase three, okay? Now, Wednesday and Thursday of this week, uh, Dominion Power will be over at Forker High School uh, replacing the roof on the greenhouse, right? The, uh, That's what I'm saying. No. Nature no. Um, I'm sorry, what is it? The nature? Outdoor lab. Outdoor lab. Outdoor lab. Oh, yeah. You're right, the outdoor lab. Okay? So if any of you all get a chance to stop over and thank Dominion Power for the work that they're doing, it would certainly be appreciated. Okay? Uh, let's see. Mountain Vista, uh, Vista Governor School, uh, April the 23rd. Uh, at the Warrington campus, they hosted a senior research symposium. And on the 24th, they did the same thing up at the Middletown campus. Uh, May the 17th, the math and, math and Science Day at King's Dominion. 
May the 19th, there's a senior, senior banquet at the Bowling Green Country Club. And the 21st to the 23rd, uh, the Virginia Junior Academy of Science will be held at Virginia Tech. Okay? And one final note here. Uh, I attended Southeastern Schools 2013 uh, Symposium last Friday, uh, and it was simply out of this world again. Uh, again, congratulations to those folks for a job well done. Some of the things that uh, the topics uh, that, they, uh, uh, that they had there at the symposium, uh, classics come alive where students read novels and expressed their meanings in very creative ways. Uh, they um, talked about the, uh, the, um, the Verdim adventure up here off of, was it Dr. Um, gosh. Dr. Snyder's uh, Adventureland up there. Um, they also had um, art in action with shadow boxes and spacecrafts and green yourself pictures. Uh, let's see, arts and science. Uh, just a, a whole number of things that had to do with arts and sciences and, uh, and visual and uh, audio aids. It was great presentation, Dr. Mitchell was there. And I ran into uh, Dr. Jack, you were there as well. Great presentation again. These folks do an outstanding job year after year. So, I think I covered everything I was supposed to cover. You sure? Did I not? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you covered everything for me, so I will see if there's anything that you'd like to say. Well, it's been a, a, a great and very interesting last couple of weeks. Uh, and one of the things, is, as uh, Mr. Bland mentioned, uh, the, the event at Southeastern, you know, every single one of those kids I, I spoke to engaged me in conversation, mm -hmm. every single one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was very, very impressive. And that's actually something I've noticed in, in all the schools I've visited. Kids are willing to engage and, and have a conversation with adults. And that's, all, that's the lost art uh, mm -hmm. these days. And I was so impressed by that. Every single one of those kids wanted to tell me about their project, tell me something about themselves, how much they love the school, et cetera, et cetera. So that was um, really an outstanding visit. And all my visits to schools have been great. I only have, I think, five or six more to go. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they've been really outstanding visits. And I'm very, very impressed by our staff and by our, our students in particular. Good. Good. Okay, we will move to the financial management report. Ms. Kotoff. Yes, good evening. You have before you the report as of March 31st. It has been presented to the Finance Committee. Um, it does represent us being 75% through the year. Um, the one item I think I would like to point out is, as I've mentioned the last couple months, we are watching food nutrition. As of the end of March, um, revenues and expenditures um, expenditures had exceeded by roughly 234,000 over revenues. Um, what you'll see next month is um, April was a very strong sales month. Um, as of the end of April, I'm just running the reports now and looking at it, the gap is um, down to about $61,000. So I did want to point out it's still in the watch list. We still will be paying in July and August expenses um, for salaries that will be accrued back. Um, without sales um, revenue, but it's looking much better. Okay. Any questions? No. Anyone? Looks great. Anything? No. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Downs, Human Resource Department. Good evening. Um, before you is a brief summary of the Human Resources activities for the month of April. Um, currently, we have begun to re recruit for the school, school year 2013-14. We have 15 certified vacancies, and we currently have five classified vacancies. Any questions this evening? And all we do is one like she's Arabic teacher. The Arabic teacher, this is not for summer school, though, right? No, this not is for, for right, school year, okay, yes. That's what it sounded like she said she was recruiting for the school board there for a minute, didn't she? <laughs> <laughs> um, has everybody RSVP the retirement for retirement dinner? dinner? Yes, I did. Okay. Yes, I did. Excellent. Okay. And it's when? June, June 3rd, oh, yeah. Monday okay. night, um, 530. Yeah, thank you. I knew it. Yeah. Okay. It's usually 6 o'clock, right? She said 530. 530? Okay. I don't remember. 530? I thought it was 530. Okay. Okay. Then we move to consent agenda. There is a motion. Madam Chair, I motion that the school board approve the following. 
Minutes of the April the 8th school board meeting, April the 15th special school board meeting and work session, April the 22nd special school board meeting and work session, the payment of bills, personnel actions, principal evaluation standards and process, instructional resource professional standards, and re re religious exemption 051313.1. Got it. Second. Motion and a second that the school board approve the minutes of the April 8th school board meeting, the April 15th special school board meeting and work session, and April 22nd special school board meeting and work session. Payment of bills, personnel actions, principal evaluation standards and process, instructional resource professional standards, and religious exemption 051313.1. Any discussion? I will just say that was some interesting movement in the personnel actions. Mark Holmes is moving to Falk yes, here. I saw that. Back where you started. Thank you. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And a new assistant principal for Mr. Warner. Is she excited or not? Oh, okay. <laughs> I couldn't tell. <laughs> one, one real sure. <laughs> yes. Congratulations. Yeah. Okay, then all those in favor, if there's no other discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no, and motion carries. Congratulations. Then we move to information items, and Ms. Bourne, you're going to do yes, the pre Labor Day waiver. Did y'all get the waiver in Green County? Yes. <clears throat> all, every year? Yeah. We get it every year because Nelson's in our was in our region, oh. so we piggybacked on them. Gotcha. <coughs> Pardon me. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Well, I think I'm nobody told me. So we're okay. <laughs> yeah. This is just for information. Yes, ma'am. Um, this is to inform you that Fauquier County Public Schools for the upcoming school year once again qualifies for a pre-Labor Day opening exemption. Um, we have met the requirement for good cause. We um, have, in five of the last 10 years, we've averaged 10.8 days being closed. Not that that's a great thing, but it does allow us to open before Labor Day. And so that we will qualify again next year. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. No, it's great. Yeah. Could we introduce our, uh, yeah, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. Sure. Let's do that. Yeah. Um, I'll just ask you, if you don't mind, Ron, it's Ron Holmes, correct? Mark. 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 Sorry? Mark. I was so close. Mark. <laughs> 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 okay. and, and Megan Brill, if you don't, all don't mind standing up so we can uh, welcome you formally. Okay, then we move to Dr. Downey, High School Social Science Elective Textbook Adoptions. Uh, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the school board, and Dr. Jenk. Uh, tonight I'm presenting information regarding the adoption of four textbooks for high school social science elective courses. Um, these are the courses that we are requesting textbooks for, our economics AP, psychology, psychology AP and sociology and we haven't done an adoption since 2003 so we are in need of new textbooks yeah. in those areas um, we have had teams of teachers that have worked over the course of the year evaluating and quite a number of textbooks and they've um, narrowed it down to the four that are um, in the in your information packet uh, those textbooks are now available for the public to look at they're at the old central elementary school the textbook office and they'll be there um, for two weeks um, for the public to to review um, the teachers that reviewed the textbooks the teams of teachers the standards that they looked at were for the psych for the psychology AP and the economics AP they used the AP um, college board curriculum as the standards to evaluate the textbooks by and for the psychology textbook they used the American Psychological Association's um, recommended uh, curriculum for high school sociology uh, uh, psychology course and likewise for the sociology textbooks textbook they use the national um, 
the um, uh, American the Council of the American Sociological Association also has standards for high school sociology course, and those were used. Um, for each course, um, we're requesting textbooks. Of course, they come now with all kinds of additional online resources, which are really wonderful. We did go through the process of looking and see, do we need a textbook, or can we just use online resources? We came to the conclusion that we really need the textbook supplemented by the online resource, uh, and we think that this will work best. Um, and the total cost we're estimating, it'll be about $65,000 uh, for uh, the textbooks for these four courses. Um, we would like um, to, um, for you to consider this. We'll put it back on the agenda uh, next month, June 10th, and hopefully it'll be, excuse me, uh, yeah, June 10th, and hopefully it'll be approved then. And if you've got any questions, I'd be happy to answer them now or at your work session. Okay, any questions now? Thank you. We can wait to the work, work session. session. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Palmer, Health Education Textbook Adoption. Good evening, Good evening, Madam Chair, School Board, and uh, Dr. Jack. Um, I'm requesting that the School Board approve at the June 10th meeting the adoption of textbooks and resources for health for use in K through 5 health, 6 through 8 health, and 9 through 12, I mean 9 through 10 health courses in the uh, county. Um, the health books themselves were last adopted in 2003. We had a family life adoption in 2008, but most of the things we have right now are out of date, um, and in some cases they are in um, poor con condition. We had a unique situation this time because we've never really addressed the quote-unquote teaching of health in the elementary schools. So uh, I just want to take a moment and tell you what we did. I had a committee that we, um, of, of teachers. We took a look at the uh, health standards Okay, and we uh, gave them back to teachers and said, which ones of these do you already teach within you know, the realm of your PE co courses? And then I looked at them as well and found some that were already taught by science teachers in the K through five realm and guidance counselors because they do a lot of character ed and they come into the classrooms and, and, and do that. So we um, ag agreed on some resources for the K through five um, PE teachers to be able to use, not textbooks for the individual students, but um, for the PE teachers to, to use as they try to uh, do some health with their students. So that's where that came, came from. Then we um, are suggesting that uh, we adopt six through eight health books, okay, okay by um, uh, <coughs> Houghton Mifflin um, Harcourt, and um, also high school, the same thing, we looked at our uh, standards of learning for health, and we looked at our family life education standards, too, that the state has, and um, we found that these health books cover all of that, and so there should be no need for supplementary information for drugs and violence and family life education. And one of the great things about this is that they do have an online portion for the, te te for the teachers, and the, the thing that our teachers liked the most about that was that they guaranteed that their statistics would be really up to date on um, teenage pregnancies, on drugs, on, you know, that, that type of thing. Because if, um, as my high school teachers told me, if they don't have the right statistics, the students will tell them very much what those statistics are because they look at them all the time. So we want to try to keep them as um, informed as we possibly can. So I'd like that to uh, be on your agenda for next month to adopt. The budget impact will be um, $164,282.14, no, 81 cents. And um, the other piece is that we'll try to have classroom sets for everyone instead of giving students, a, you know, because they don't need to take them home, they, they can use the classroom sets. So that's, that's a savings for us too. I'll be willing to answer any questions that you have right now or at the work session. Work session. Work session. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. No. Isn't Dr. Bird <coughs> next? No, I thought it was me. <laughs> <laughs> it was marketing. Mine says marketing. Okay, good. Let's go okay. We could do that. <laughs> okay. We Mine do doesn't, that. but that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. We're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you, oh, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we don't have <laughs> 
Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, Dr. Jack. Tonight, for your information, I would like to highlight the key features of the vocabulary program recommendation you have before you. Mm -hmm. I'm asking the board to adopt the Sadlier Vocabulary Workshop, the Sadlier Vocabulary for Success, and the Teacher Created Materials Building Vocabulary from Word Roots texts at your June meeting. The Vocabulary Adoption Committee is recommending programs that will meet the standards for vocabulary development for grades 5 through 12 in the most recent Virginia Standards of Learning. Currently, we do not have a program in place to systematically develop students' knowledge of Greek and Latin word roots and affixes, and the level 2 and level 3 vocabulary that students need to know in order to be successful across their secondary curriculum and in preparation for college. Research has shown that a large vocabulary is predictive of and reflective of high levels of reading achievement. Vocabulary development also aids in improving students' background knowledge necessary for comprehension. As you can see from the sample lesson included in your information packet, Vocabulary Workshop, the program we are recommending for our core instruction, addresses a variety of nonfiction reading genres and provides authentic context for learning new words. I don't know if you noticed this or not, but QR codes are, are embedded in the lesson, so you can hold your cell phone up to it, uh, and it will take, the link will take you um, to uh, ancillary resources such as the pronunciation of words, review exercises, vocabulary word games, and self-tests. Teacher resources include guides for whole group and small group differentiation. For students in, who need resources for intervention and remediation, we are recommending vocabulary for success and uh, building vocabulary from word roots. And as you can see from those sample lessons, the approach there is to fill in gaps in student knowledge and to reinforce fundamental skills. Um, I know that the price there is hefty. Uh, it represents less than $10 per student per year uh, for the uh, full adoption of work, uh, books which are consumable. Uh, you may decide that that's um, too over the moon, but I wanted to start with what the ideal program would look like. The students would be able to take those books home, take their cell phones out at home and uh, access those links. Um, but uh, we can sharpen our pencils and look for different, different implementation strategies uh, if, if the funding would uh, necessitate that. I'm already thinking about ways to, to work on that. Not to mention the fact that I've already cut 6% uh, off the shipping. I've, I'm, I'm trying to negotiate <laughs> downward. I've been working on that. It's still a staggering figure. I recognize that. Uh, but I believe it's an important program and it, and it will fill a gap that uh, currently exists. Mm -hmm. Questions or work session? Work session. Or? Yeah, can I just make a recommendation? Yeah. Yes. Is there a way for us to, to have a demonstration on that? Um, of the QR code? Yeah, the QR code and particularly the um, audible vocabulary and, and the pronunciation. Yes, if, in fact, if you follow the embedded link, uh, you can do it yourself with your cell phone, but I'd be happy to demonstrate for you at the work session. Yeah, unbelievably, I'm horrible at QR codes. So okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you need to update your, your QR okay. reader. But that would be really helpful. And I'm happy to do the, it. Uh, extra resources that sure. you provide. Thank mm -hmm. you. Okay. Any other questions? No, it was great. Uh -huh. yes. Yeah, it was. Yes. Okay, now I have CTE. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, good evening. My name is Sarah Fry, and I'm the Career and Technical Education Supervisor. I'd like to start by congratulating Megan Brill on her new position as AP at Kettle Run. Megan is an agriculture teacher and the CTE department head at Kettle Run, and she's done a tremendous job. We're going to miss her greatly, but we look forward to working with her in her new capacity. Yes. Yeah, thanks. Yes. Yeah. great. All right. Um, I'd like to start by um, tonight with the textbook adoption for marketing education. Um, I'm here tonight with our department heads for business and marketing, Sandra Colvin and Melinda Pilla, who worked very diligently with the committee during this adoption. Um, this is for our marketing program. The committee reviewed available choices. They correlated content with course competencies. They've also evaluated these selections in terms of supplemental student and teacher materials, um, the use of graphics, assignments, and real-world applications. Um, the proposal in front of you represents seven titles. 
to be used in eight courses. It includes all of the student and teacher supplementary resources and an estimated 8% shipping. Um, this is a small adoption, so I don't quite have the negotiating power that Eileen does <laughs> in getting, <laughs> getting those rates down. <laughs> Um, these books will be purchased in class sets and they're currently on public display and will remain there until May 21st. Um, the cost of this adoption is approximately 58600 okay. Any questions? Um, I just wanted to comment your committee was great. Really, oh, thank you. With parents, special ed teacher, and so it was really good with the industry representative. Great. It was great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Um, great. Okay. You want to move to? I will move right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So work session? Yeah. Okay. Um, the, my next item is the Carl Perkins budget for the 2013-14 school year. Um, the proposal in front of you was presented and approved by the CT Advisory Council. Um, Perkins grant is a federal grant that's given to localities to improve, initiate, and modernize CTE programs. Um, this, these dollars cannot supplant local local dollars and cannot be used for materials, supplies, or salaries. Um, the budget is based on an allocation of $112,183.64, which is the current year allocation. We're always told to create our budget based on this year's dollars, and then in July, they'll be updated to, to current. And um, his past history has shown it stays within a couple thousand dollars of that amount. So I will review the budget with you. Um, Included in this is money for professional development, for a career pathways fair that we offer each February for our rising ninth graders to travel and see CTE and career pathways options available to them at the high school level. Um, assistance for student organizations for state and national competition expenses. Um, to help supplement the industry certification testing that we're doing for all our CTE completers. Um, the implementation of two career coaches. Um, it's a purchase service from Lord Fairfax, a partnership that we go in with them, and th that's actually a person who is in our building four days a week for the entire school year to assist with um, career advisement. Um, the purchase of 10 lab computers for the health and medical sciences lab that are um, seriously dated computers. Um, 3D printers, one for each high school so that our engineering students can actually create 3D models of their designs. Um, and um, in our auto technology program, the all data program and the today's classroom curriculum, which help our students um, work in databases and with scanners and with local latest curriculum that's NATEF approved um, for, to keep that certification for that program. And then the last item was some commercial kitchen to help upgrade our, we have consumable kitchens. If you've been in the labs, they're consumable. So we want to put a few cons, um, commercial items in there to help prepare ourselves or position ourselves to offer some upper level culinary arts. So where are we going to put those? We're going to use we're going to use the current labs, but I mean we're oh, talking okay. we're talking about the items that they would need to meet the competencies. Okay. Um, we definitely don't have the funding to retool okay. those in, in terms of commercial. But I think the teachers have been very creative. They've talked with some other localities about some steps that we can take to, to position ourselves to be able to offer another level. Nice. Okay. Thank you. And before you leave, sure. I just want to say that uh, we've been reading for the last month about all the great things that the, our CTE oh, students great. Are, are doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Very we, pleased. We just got one today. Mm -hmm. um, the TSA the students. Yeah. students. We had and the auto technology. I mean, it's great. So, yeah, good job. Thank you. We're very excited. The teachers and students have been working hard, and um, Alexandra Wolf has uh, been winning everywhere she goes. Right. So we're we're very right. hopeful that yeah. in June she'll continue her tour of victories. So yeah. thank you. So thank you. Yeah. Yes. That's okay. That's good with me. That's yeah. all right. Carl Perkins. Carl yeah. Perkins won the. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All righty, Ms. Downs, you're back up again. Permanent full-time teaching position. Yes. Um, we'd like to request the school board authorize a full-time permanent teaching position. Administration is in the process of staffing for the 2013-2014 school year. The school district has teaching needs in ESL, foreign language, middle school, Kettle Run High School, and CTE due to the required economics and personal finance course. With only one position added, 
from the FY14 budget, the associate superintendent is reducing positions in those schools that have low class size projections to meet the aforementioned teaching needs. However, the reductions are not enough to meet these needs. So we are requesting that um, to use instructional line funding for the secondary teachers extra teaching periods mm -hmm. um, to fund this position. Um, the administration is anticipating that the extra period request will be reduced in FY14, therefore absorbing the cost of the one teacher, which would be $65,213. We would hope that you would um, move this request to action tonight so we could begin to recruit. The position would be used for CTE um, or Kettle Run High School, I think combined, yeah. both. <laughs> You're okay? Yeah. Okay. 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 And we already... So. Okay. Yes. Okay. Then the okay. next I, one. I'd like to request a full-time permanent special education teaching position. Um, special education has also been looking at class sizes and staffing needs for the upcoming school year. The um, H.M. Pearson Elementary School has a need for a special education teacher. So um, we propose that we will take two instructional assistant special ed positions that are currently vacant, use the funding from those positions to create a full-time special education teaching position. So this would be a cost-neutral position and that the savings from the vacancies for the teacher would be seventy thousand three hundred and forty eight dollars we like cost neutral yes <laughs> and we're also requesting that you would move this item to action this evening okay 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 do, do I stay here okay. I'll stay there I will stay here for this one too in front of you tonight's a resolution um, we would like to sign contracts with our health insurance provider anthem and also um, Optum RX. During the budget process, we discussed how we were going to s have a separate company do our prescription drug management. That was a cost savings of approximately $800,000. So this action tonight would just make move forward the signing of the contracts for Anthem and for Optum RX. Right. I mean, we've already passed the budget. Yes. Which included all of this. All this, of this is administration this is, tie up, is, right? Right. To put it into action, right? This is just yep. tying the bow. Right. Okay. Any okay. questions on that? Everybody? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're done. <laughs> is this? All right. Ms. Morn. Yes, ma'am. Um, tonight we were asking that um, the board authorize the chairman to execute a guaranteed maximum price contract with the Whiting Turner Company, contracting company, in the amount of $569,704 for the demolition of the 1963 section of the 100-200 wing of Falkier High School. Um, originally, this work was included in phase one. Um, it was delayed while we reconsidered what we would do with that wing. Finally, uh, it was decided that we would retain the 1979 portion and demolish the 1963 portion. And we did set aside cash. Um, that The funding is included as part of phase three um, with bonds and cash. And part of the cash was the um, demolition. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. uh, Ms. Kotov found $674,000 that w was applied to the phase three work mm -hmm. and um, 569,000 of it will go to um, this part of the project. Be <laughs> yeah, she, oh, over a period of time, but yeah. um, she did work at finding that. And um, we are asking that you move this for action tonight because this work, as um, Mr. Bland reported, will be done this summer right. and um, we yeah. need to move forward. Any questions? I just have one question, uh, or two. Uh, one was about the, the temporary wall it's, uh, that's going up on the 1979 portion, and that's a temporary wall because we anticipate some additional work being done. Is that correct? Right. Well, at this point, we have the architect working on the design for the 79. And if you recall, the only thing that's changing in the 79, we're not doing any renovation on the interior. Right other than the fact that we will have to bring it up to code as far as the restrooms go in the stairway to the um, second floor. We have included in this 569,000, 30,000 to button up that building, 
But what we hope to do, if we can get the design in time, we're going to have a meeting. Mr. Darrell, myself, will meet with the um, architect and the contractor, Whitening Turner, to see if there's any way we can actually have the work done without spending that $30,000. Um, so we are hopeful that at the end of May, um, 1st of June, we expect to have that design. So we are going to try to move that forward if we can. If we can't, from a timing perspective, we won't. Is Mr. Darrell shaking his head and saying I'm wrong? No. 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 He's shaking his head. He's I'm wrong. Yeah. I, know, I know you're looking at us. <laughs> Don't hesitate if I say something wrong to correct me. And I also want to set expectations. Uh, what I don't see in here is anything that we discussed about that breezeway between sort of the weight room area and that 79 way, uh, uh, building. Um, we don't have any of that in here, correct? The um, well, there's there's a current there's a canopy that canopy, goes I'm into sorry, that. Canopy. There's a canopy that already goes between the gym or the um, p the athletic area and the 79 with the door, and that does that's not going to change. That's okay, the only thing. that's going to remain. Right, right. that won't change. That won't change. Right, right. I just want to make sure. Right, that. that doesn't. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thank okay. you. Oh, did I ask you to move this to action tonight? Yes, you did. Okay, I think that's all of them. So, anybody want to make a motion? Well, let, me, let me get right here. Um, okay. Do we have to make this move thing? Yeah. Yes. Okay, I move that uh, the school board move act uh, information items number 11 G, H, I, and J to action for consideration and approval this evening. Second. Motion and a second that the school board move information items 11 G, H, I, and J to action for consideration for approval this evening. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries and we move to action items. Madam Chair, I motion that the school board approve a permanent full-time teaching position to be paid from funds in the fiscal year 14 instructional budget. Second. Motion and a second that the school board approve a permanent full-time teaching position to be paid from funds in the FY14 instructional budget. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries. And we will move to the next one. I move that the school board approve, excuse me, approve a permanent full-time special education teaching position to be paid from funds in the fiscal year 14 special education budget. Second. Motion and a second that the school board approve a permanent full-time special education teaching position to be paid from funds in the FY14 special education budget. Any discussion? If none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. And that motion carries. And we move to the next one. Madam Chair, I move that the school board authorize the chairman to sign the resolution awarding the medical insurance and prescription drug plan contract to Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield and Optum RX, respectively. Second. Motion and a second that the school board authorize the chairman to sign the resolution awarding the medical insurance <coughs> and prescription drug plan contract to Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield and Optum RX, respectively. Any discussion? Um, I just would like to respond to Ms. Baker's uh, comment that the this impact is much more um, broad than just $500,000. And you and I get together and we can talk about that. But this is um, positioning us for a lot of different things. Uh, the Affordable Health Care Act and the county will follow. They will follow eventually. So, okay. Any other discussion? Yeah, um, one recommendation. Maybe this fall um, we look at another survey of our teachers or our, our staff, uh, specifically on the question of compensation versus benefits. Uh, I'll bolt it up in the personnel it's committee already. meeting. Oh, great. Thanks. Okay. Dr. Kiyoki. Any others? Okay. If none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no. Motion carries and we move to the Whiting Turner contract. Madam Chair, I motion that the school board authorize the chairman to sign a guaranteed maximum price contract amendment with the Whiting Turner contracting company in the amount of $569,704 for demolition of the 1963 section of the 100-200 wing. Second. 
Motion and a second that the school board authorize the chairman to sign a guaranteed maximum price contract amendment with the Whiting Turner Contracting Company in the amount of $569,704 for demolition of the 1963 section of the 100-200 wing. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say no, and that motion carries. And is there any other business to come before us tonight in open session? No. If not, then motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned.